Hey guys, Jesse from Sign Agent here. I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of the Sign Agent system, including all of its basic features and functions. So when you first create an account, you're going to log in and you'll end up here at the dashboard. The dashboard gives you a summary of all the projects and organizations that you currently have access to within Sign Agent. So when I say organization, that is going to be whoever ends up with the signs at the end of the day. So I've made a fake client called Training Inc. So if you're a designer, the organization is going to be your client. If you're a facility, you're, the organization is probably going to be whatever facility you work for. Within an organization, you can have one or more projects. And here I've got one called Starter Project. Uh, and I've made it one of my favorites just by clicking on the star here. And within a project, you can have multiple states. The states make up the workflow of the project as it goes from start to finish. So in this one, I've put some in for survey, draft, review, fabrication, installation, punch list, and complete. These states are fully customizable. You can have as many or as few as you need based on the project that you're working on. You can also see the project of any reviews that are ongoing. You can see how many signs are existing within each state. You can also see a start date and end date assigned to each state. And the colors of that will change based on whether it's completed or overdue or ongoing or in the future. Uh, also in the dashboard, you can do a search for certain names of projects or organizations or states or users that you're sharing a project or organization with. You can filter by archived or favorites. You can also create new organizations from here uh, by using these three buttons in the top left. There are three options here. New organizations can give you a completely blank organization. So you'll have to do a bunch of the setup on the front end. Starter organization gives you one with some sample data in there, some location plans, some signs, some sign types. Uh, and just to give you sort of a, a jumping point for you to get comfortable with the site, that's what we're gonna be used for our training session today. And you can also clone an existing organization. So you, if you've got an organization that you really like, you can choose to copy parts of it as you create your new one. So if you've got a standard set of sign types or if you like the way a project is set up, you can copy those aspects over and leave behind things like um, signs or location plans. So if for this example, I'm gonna click on the starter organization button here. So this will bring up a page like this where you can name your organization. So in this example, I'm gonna call it Training Inc. You can add admins and viewers and admin will have full access to everything in the organization, just like you, the creator, will have. They'll be able to see and change anything they want within the organization, including permissions. So this is someone who is able to have full permission to everything in the organization. And a viewer is someone who can see all the signs in the organization, but can't make changes. So they can see signs, they can select them, they can leave comments, but they cannot make any other changes. So they can't move things around they can't change messages or anything like that. So the other main difference is that admins need to be paid licensed users of SignAgent and viewers can come in for free. So normally you would choose which organization to copy, what parts of it you wanna copy over and click copy. Now I've already done this to save us some time. So I'll just jump back to the dashboard and select Training Incorporated, which is the one I've created already. So this will bring you into the main part of Sign Agent where you can see I've got a bunch of signs already on a location plan here. Just to the left of that, you'll see a listing of all the signs I currently have visible. And on the very left-hand side of the screen, you have what we very creatively call the left-hand sidebar. It contains information about the projects, locations, and sign types that are available in this organization. So for this video, I'm gonna start with the left-hand sidebar, talk about projects, locations, and sign types. Then I'm gonna come back here and talk about creating signs and editing signs and all the stuff you actually care about. So to start, let's talk about projects. If I wanna see more information about the one project, the starter project that I have in this organization, I can just right click on it and choose edit. This will bring me into a page with information about that project where I can change its name, add some details, and you'll also notice that I can add members and viewers to this project as well. So this works, these are permission levels that are similar to the ones for the organization, but just for a specific project. So if you had, let's say an interior project and an exterior project within the same organization, you can invite members or viewers just to a specific project and they would only be able to see or change information 
within this specific project. So members will be able to make changes, viewers will be able to see them only, and members need to be paid and viewers can come in for free. Uh, you can also change the scope of a project by using mandates. So you can say people in this project can only access certain locations or only certain sign types. And you can also set a budget for this project. So I've given myself a nice, healthy $100,000 budget, and I'm using Canadian dollars because I'm Canadian and that's what we use here. Within the project, as I mentioned, you can have a number of different states. Uh, these states are customizable. You can have as many or as few as you want. To show you how these work, I'm going to right click on the review state and click edit. So here you can see this one is called review. I can add some details here. Uh, you can change the hex color. Uh, this will affect how things show up in a page called the project overview, which has some charts and graphs that will show how the project has changed over time. I'm not going to go into that now, but if you want to see that, you can right click here and click view overview. You can also see the start date and end date or mark a state as complete. That affects how it shows up on the dashboard. But what I want to focus on here is the tab called permissions. Besides being able to invite people to a whole organization or to a project, you can also invite someone just to a specific state. So here I've added myself as an example. But if you invited someone to the review state, they would only be able to see the seven signs in review they would be able to leave comments, but they can also approve signs or reject signs in a specific state. So this is a free tier as well. So you can invite your client or someone on your team who you want to do some reviewing and they can approve signs or reject signs. And they'll only be able to see the seven signs in review. Everything else will be hidden from them. So if I click save here and then jump into level one, and I'll select one of these signs. It doesn't really matter which one. I'll pick A2-6. So there's a lot of information here, but what I want to focus on is at the top, you can see this sign is part of the starter project and it's currently in the draft state. Now I want to talk about review, so I'm going to change it from draft to review just by clicking in this drop-down list and selecting review. And I'll scroll down and click save. So when I do that, you can see now at the top, I have an approval button. And a rejection button. So your client will see something very similar to this. They'll get an invitation, they'll log in, they'll get the first sign pop up automatically and from there they can choose to approve it or reject it. And whatever they pick, it will once they approve it, it'll just jump them to the next sign in the list and it's a very sort of smooth process for them. They can see exactly what's in here, how it looks, and let's say they wanted to reject it. And the comment, they'll say text is too big. When you reject a sign, you are forced to leave a comment, which means that you can't reject 50 signs without telling anyone why. Not that you would ever do that. Uh, and then once they're done, it will send you as the admin, it'll send an email saying, hey, this person has finished their review. Uh, you can check out what they've done here. One other thing I want to show you is if I go back to the sign I just rejected, each sign in SignAgent also has a full audit trail. So what that means is I can scroll down and I can see all the changes that have happened to this sign since it was originally created. Now there is some sample data in here because this is a starter organization. So you can see Nathan created this sign two months ago and then moved the sign. But you can also see that zero minutes ago, I rejected this sign and left a comment of text is too big. So it really adds a level of documentation and accountability to everything that you and anyone you're working with does within SignAgent. So that's a quick summary of projects and states. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about locations. Easiest way to show you how that works is I'm just going to create a new one. So what you would do is you would click on this wrench next to locations and choose new location. Uh, no matter what, you're going to have to give it a name and a short code. So I'll give it a name of level four. That's sort of the full name of this level or this location, and I'll give it a short code of four. It's a shorter abbreviation that's used in some reports and in some other places. So normally what you'll do here is you'll click choose file. You will upload a PDF and then it will take a minute to render and then you can start adding signs to it. There's nothing really more to it. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that if you are replacing a plan, just try to keep things at the same size and scale, similar to how you would in 
InDesign or another program just because if you keep things at the same size and scale, it means all your signs are going to stay in the right location without any adjustments needed. So that's the basic way to do it. SignAgent is also integrated with an exterior mapping software. So what that means is that if I go to this one called Burlington and click edit, you can see that I've got uh, the name is Burlington, short code is B, and I can do a location search of a real world address and it will give me a map for that location. So 1295 North Service Road, that's actually Sign Agent's office location. And you can see I've placed some signs around the building over here. So it's placed around a map here. I can switch between street view and satellite view if I want. But if you're working on a large exterior project, like uh, citywide wayfinding or a state park or something similar, you can switch to this exterior view just to give you a bit more, uh, you can cover a wider area without trying to capture something from Google Earth or Google Maps or something like that. So that's pretty much it for location plans. Uh, one quick sidebar I wanna make, no pun intended, is that if you want to rearrange anything in this left-hand sidebar, it's as easy as drag and drop. So if for whatever reason, I didn't want the sign agent office to be part of this exterior folder anymore, I could just drag it out of here and let's say I'll put it at the top. So then it would move it outside of that folder and then anytime anyone came in here, it would affect how it shows up in here. You can add folders just to organize the left-hand sidebar a bit as well. It makes it a little bit easier to sort of know where you're, what you're looking at, especially in a larger complicated project. All right, moving on to sign types. The easiest way to show you how these work is to go into one of the examples we have here. So I'm gonna right click on A2 room ID, choose edit, and it will bring me to this page where I can see information about this particular sign type. So it has a name, a short code, a hex color, that affects how it shows up on the map. So if I thought, eh, this blue color is not really my jam, I can switch it to, oh, let's say a nice green. That's not so bad. Uh, and then when I save it, all the A2 signs will now be this green color instead of this blue. It changes it across the entire organization. I can also add some details in here. Anything I put in here, you do have the option to include it in your message schedules. You can see there's a unit cost. This unit cost is used to help calculate budgets using the budget that you had in your project. It'll show up in some of your reports as well as it's used in the project overview as well. You can customize the fields that are available for each sign type. So because this is a room identification sign, it has a spot for room number, a translation for that into Braille, a spot for room name, and a spot for the level color, which is inherited from its location. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, you can also add a default value for any one of these fields. So what this means is if, let's use a restroom as an example. Let's say you're making 500 restrooms and they all have the same message. You can make the default message for room name to just say restroom. This way, anytime you create a new sign of that type, it will automatically have that message in there. Just saving you a bit of time as you're creating a bunch of those signs across a large project. You could also use this for exit signs or for, um, yeah, if you had a standard slogan or logo that's being included in a lot of signs, you could include them as default values so you didn't have to include it every time you make a new sign. Number of sides is pretty self-explanatory. Repeating message fields, I'm actually gonna come back to this in a couple of minutes when I have a better example to show you how this works. And you can also add some detail fields. So these are usually notes or other information, things that aren't necessarily about the message or how the sign looks, but are still important to track on a sign-by-sign -sign basis. So we use it for things like installation instructions or notes or fabrication notes or dimensions or backing, or you can use it for pretty much anything you want they'll show up in your sign as well. And you can add default values for these if that would be helpful to you too. The next tab at the top we have is template. So one of the more powerful things that sign agent can do is that it can, you can create a template for each sign type in Illustrator. So you essentially lay it out the way you normally would and with the correct fonts and colors and the full size. And then you can export that template and put that into sign agent and sign agent will automatically create full size vectorized artwork for each one of your signs. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute, but it's a pretty powerful feature. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to create these templates right now, partially because there is a lot to it and it would make this video very, very long. 
and partly because we have lots of great information on it on our tutorial pages. So if you want more information about templates, what you can do is click on your name, click on this button that says support, and then scroll down to working with templates where you can see lots of information here. If I select one of these, you'll also notice that a lot of these tutorials have downloadable examples. So you can see an example of one that we created in Illustrator. You can then modify that or build off of that for your own templates so that you can sort of try it out and get a good feel for how these templates can work for you. It's also worth noting that there's lots of other information about SignAgent on these pages. So if you ever have any questions about how to do something in SignAgent, this is usually a great place to start. Uh, back to the sign type, the last tab in here is the files tab where you can upload a technical drawing. If you have a technical drawing or a specs package for this particular sign type, you can upload it here just for easy reference for yourself or anyone that you're working with. You can also choose to attach a file in this comment section, and you can actually do that pretty much anywhere in SignAgent. So if you attach a file to this sign type, that file will be available in any signs of that sign type. Or you can do the same thing with a location or a project or a state, and then that file will be available to all signs within that location or project or state. All right, so let's check out an example of this A2 room ID sign. So I'm going to go back to level one just by clicking on it in the left hand sidebar. And you'll see they're all this nice green color now. So I will select one of these just by clicking on it either in the location or in the list. So here you can see those fields that we set up before. We've got room number, we've got room number in braille, we've got room name, and we've got level color. Now lots of the fields in signage you can just click in here and make changes to it. Let's see, it doesn't look like it's room 110, it looks like it's actually room 101-9. So if I change that and then save it, which I can do by scrolling down and clicking save or pressing enter or pressing command S, you can see that it changes the room number here and it also automatically updates the artwork to accurately reflect what I just changed. You'll also notice that the room number Braille automatically translated to the number that I just added. So Braille is the only language that we will currently automatically translate. You can do translations into other languages as well, but those you'll have to add manually for now. It is worth noting that Braille can be translated into a number of different standards and grades based on what you need for your project. The room name here, I can also change. Let's change it from David's office to Jesse's office. And you'll see that that will update in this template as well. You'll, the last thing you might notice is that the level color here, it says inherited from level one. So what that means is that instead of me choosing this color for every sign that I need on this particular location, it's instead being inherited from the location that it's in. So this is really useful for things like parking garages or hospitals where each level might have a different color associated with it. You can set it up once in the location and then it will automatically be applied to the signs that need it across that floor. All right, let's move on and talk a little bit about repeating messages. So I'm gonna select a wall directional sign and you'll see in here that the messages are laid out a little bit differently. Instead of having a separate uh, message field for arrow, destination, and symbol across three different rows, you instead have them show up in a grid that more, accur more accurately reflects what the sign actually looks like. So you can see I have three rows with arrow, destination, and symbol, and you'll notice that it affects how the artwork shows up here too. So if I get rid of some of these, and then save, you'll see the artwork will update based on what I have in here. You might have also noticed that the symbol was automatically applied or unapplied based on the message that I put in there. So this is because besides being able to use translations for Braille or for other languages, you can also use it for symbols or colors as well. This way, anytime I use the word restroom, so if I type in restroom in here and then save, you'll notice that the symbol is added automatically. The other thing that's nice about using repeating messages like this is that if I want to rearrange how these are showing up, I can just click and drag on the rows here and put them into the order that I like. And then when I save, it will be reflected in the artwork as well. 
So I'm also going to show you how to set this up for yourself. So I'm going to go to the B1 wall directional, right click on it, and then choose edit. And then under fields, you'll notice that our current there are currently no message fields in here. And that's because we're only using repeating message fields in this sign. So if I scroll down to repeating message fields, the way that you set this up is you think about your sign, you say, okay, my wall directional has one side, it only has one real column of information, and it has three rows per column. So this way I can set up a sign that has three rows, and each row I want to have arrow, destination, and a destination symbol. So I set it up like this, one side, three rows, arrow, destination, and symbol, and that makes the sort of grid that you saw in the B1 sign type. For more information on setting up sign types, including repeating messages, you can there are tutorials on our website. You can check those out there. All right, let's jump back to level one and talk about some general interface stuff within SignAgent. So when you're on your location plan like this, you can move around just by clicking and dragging on any empty spot on the location plan. You can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel or by double clicking or by using the plus and minus buttons in the bottom right corner here. You'll notice in the left-hand sidebar that each entry here has a green checkbox next to it. These green checkboxes are visibility filters. So if you only wanted to see the signs in draft, for example, I can just deselect the other states. These are the only signs that are currently marked as draft, so I can deal with those as I need to. It's also worth noting that my visibility filters will affect what shows up in my reports as well. So whatever I have filtered on or within my search will show up in my reports. Everything else will be hidden. You can also see there's an option to search in here as well. So if I do a search for my own name, you'll see it only shows up in one sign right now, which is Jesse's office, which we changed earlier in the video. So you can see it's really easy to narrow down people's names or certain destinations just by doing a search in the search bar. The search bar will search any messages, repeating messages, detail fields, comments, or the number field for all of these signs. So if you want to find something in any of those areas, you can use the search bar to find it very easily. You can also get more advanced by clicking on this advanced and you can see things like who created it or modified it or last commented on it. And when those things happened, you can also check if it has files or photos or artwork or tags, uh, and you can search by those things as well. So it's pretty easy to um, it's pretty easy to do an advanced search by any of those. A couple more things to talk about in general interface. You can click on this notification button to see any notifications. Uh, you will get a notification anytime someone leaves a comment or rejects a sign or adds a photo. And from here, you can easily access that comment or information or sign just by clicking on it. The last thing to show you in here is, I'm just going to clear this search, is if you click on this button here, you can open up an expanded list view, which allows you to scroll through your signs like a list. So you can scroll through and say, oh, you can see these photos very easily. You can see a larger version of photos or artwork just by clicking on it. You can see these signs have artwork. This sign has no artwork, but you can still see all the messages in it. If I want to see more information about any of these signs, I can just click on the row and it will pop up the sign dialog as usual. When I'm done with this expanded list view, I can just close it by clicking this X. Selecting signs, you can select a single sign just by clicking on it, either in the location here or by clicking on it in the left-hand sidebar. You can also select multiple signs by clicking on one sign and then holding down shift and clicking on the next one and holding down shift and clicking on the next one as many as you want. So this will allow you to make changes to multiple signs at once or move multiple signs at once. You can also hold down shift and drag a box around the signs you'd like to select. Or in the list on the left, you can click on one, hold down shift, click on one lower down, and it will also select all the signs in between there as well. If you want to create a new sign, the easiest way to do that is just to right click where you want this new sign to go. So let's say I need some signs for these offices up at the top here. I'm going to right click by this door and I'm going to say, okay, the draft state, it, I need it to be a room ID. So I'll go in here, click room ID, and it's the door is 
on the bottom there. So I'm going to have the direction be like this. The location is automatically um, generated based on the location plane that you're on. And the number is automatically generated based on the numbers that have already been used in this location. So if I click Save, I can see I have numbers up to 18. When I click Save, the sign will be added as number 19. One other thing that's good to know is that as you're creating another sign, Sign Agent will remember what you were working with last and use that to populate this. So it remembers, oh, draft state, A2 room ID facing this way, click Save. So then when you're going down the hallway, you can just right click, Save, right click, Save, right click, Save, and create a bunch of signs really quickly. And you can then make changes to the messaging or other contents later on. So the next thing to talk about is reports. So to run a report, you can just click on where your organization name and click on export. From here, you can give your report files a name. You can choose what types of reports you want to choose. So you have PDF locations. This will export a PDF with your signs on them. An Excel message schedule, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. A PDF message schedule. Now these are fully customizable. Uh, so if you want more information on how to create your own message schedules, you can check that out on our tutorial pages as well. I just have an original and a sign count, both of which are defaults that come with every organization. You can choose to export your technical drawings if you have any. Uh, you can choose to export the artwork. Each piece of artwork will come out as an individual file. It will be full size and fully vectorized based on the templates that you created. You can also choose to have it outline the text if that would be useful for you. Last but not least, you can also export any photos that are within SignAgent as well. So any photos that have been added either manually or using the mobile app, you can export them in bulk so that you can also have them stored locally on your computer if that's something you need to be doing. You can also have it send you an email when this report has completed. I don't need to do that right now. So I'm just going to click export. Normally these reports will take a few minutes to complete because each report runs up its own separate report server. So what this means is that it does usually take three or four minutes for a smaller report to complete, but you can also run as many reports as you want and they'll run at the same time. So instead of queuing them up in a row, like a lot of programs will do, this will allow you to run as many reports as you want at the same time without each one affecting each other's speed. I happen to have these reports done already. So you can see a sample of what they look like. This is the message schedule. It includes the photo, sort of a thumbnail of each photo and artwork. So you can scroll through and see what this looks like. It's a lot like my expanded list view, but kind of broken down into more rigid columns. You can also see a sign count here. You can see I have a C1 amenity ID. And this one is also broken down into states as well. So I can see how many signs of each type are within each state, which can be pretty useful. The PDF artwork you'll see is broken into folders, but I can go through and see samples of the ones that I created. They all look pretty good. The location plans. These are ones that I created earlier, so the sign tags are still blue, but you can see, I mean, it looks like a location plan, nothing too surprising there. Last but not least is the Excel message schedule. So if I open that guy up, the main thing to note is that this Excel message schedule has a bunch of different tabs in it. First one is a sign overview, which tells you how many signs of each type are on each location. So it gives you a sign count broken down by location. You can also see a sign estimate, which is similar, but includes those unit costs that we talked about before. The message schedule will give you a single row for each sign. So you can see each one is broken down and which works really well for regular signs, but it gets a little bit unwieldy for repeating messages. So you can also see it grouped by type, which makes the columns a little bit easier to see and a little bit easier to read. You can also see each sign type has its own tab. So you can break down the message schedule that way as well. One thing you might note is that if you're using exterior location plans, the Excel message schedule will include latitude and longitude coordinates. You can change those manually within SignAgent as well, but those can be pretty helpful for installers. You'll also notice that the leftmost column on each tab is a spot where you can view it in the browser. So if you 
click on this link and you have access to this particular sign, it will take you directly to this sign within Sign Agent so you can get some context or make some changes as you need to. So that's pretty much it for reports and which brings us pretty much to the ending of the training session. If you do have any more questions, I would recommend you check out the tutorials. Again, you can find that by clicking on your name and then clicking on support. If you have questions that can't be answered, click on this feedback button. It'll allow you to send a message to our support team who is very helpful. They're very quick. They will get back to you as quickly as they possibly can. All right, that's it. All the best with SignAgent.